Welcome to my MindTest 5.4.0 release video. MindTest 5.4.0 was released February 23rd, 2021, and brings with it lots of new features and improvements. As a quick disclaimer, this isn't an official video, I'm just a guy that enjoys MindTest and wants to share the news. I'll be taking a look at some of the new features that people have already started using and have mods with, and I'll have links to full review videos of those mods. Before we get to that though, I want to mention a few deprecations and compatibility notes for modders. The use texture alpha field in a node def is no longer taking a true false boolean, but rather uses clip blend or opaque. Check the documentation to see what you should be using. Get player velocity and add player velocity were replaced with shorter get velocity and add velocity. A quick search and replace in your code should take care of 99% of that. Some other new features to note that I don't really have any specific video to showcase. The place and dig buttons can be configured only via mindtestconf at this time. Additionally, the mouse buttons can also be remapped. Again, only via mindtestconf at this time. Object selection boxes are disabled by default. You can still go on and change that if you want, just go into the settings. And we now have support for loading media from subfolders. This is huge when you have a ton of media and you want to keep it organized, especially if you are overwriting textures from other mods that your mod depends on. You can keep everything kind of categorized by which mod it's going to or what specific aspect of your mod it is in a certain folder. It makes it a lot easier to find stuff. Uh, let me think what else. Ah, yes, mind tests get artificial light and mind tests get natural light were added. This gives you the ability to see if a node is being lit from natural sources, i.e. the sun or the moon, or artificial, i.e. torch or mise lamps. Alright, enough of the talking. Let's get on to some of the features that I can show you. The in-game content browser received a lot of love this time around, so you can access it by going to the content tab and then clicking the browse online content button here. And we will see we have, uh, currently at the time of the recording, 191 pages worth of mods, texture packs, games. Um, I believe that's all. So we can search. So, um, oh, I don't know. Let's let's see if there's something with ice. I don't know how I drinks has ice or pipe works, but okay. Um, Doomsday device. Oh, that's a node core thing. Uh, sure, let's do this more snow mod. So we can install it by clicking the install button and it'll pull up the screen telling us the base game. Dependencies, this one only needs default, which is already installed. If it wasn't already installed, we would have the option to click the install missing dependencies, which by default is checked on, and that would uh, essentially install the dependencies required for us. And then we just click the install button, and it was very quick, but we saw there was a button here for a fraction of a second showing that it was downloading. We also have, when you have installed mods, uh, an update all button, which you can click. Oh, okay. I thought that was going to uh, tell us which mods were required or had updates. I guess not. That's all right, though. So that's installed all of the updates for us. We can also filter if we just want to get games, if we're only looking for mods, or if we're only looking for texture packs. Um, you can see there's eight pages of texture packs. Pretty neato. Uh, let's just take a look at one of these to see. Okay, it doesn't say anything about like what base game is specifically meant for. Um, here it does say for node core game. This one does say alternate for the mind clone two texture pack. So the descriptions on these do help you out a little bit. Additionally, if you want to see more information, you can click the view more information in a web browser, and that'll just open the content database page in your web browser. Um, I won't show that because it, it's just a web browser. There's there's nothing to show. Go back to all packages. Let me go ahead and try to find something here real quick that would have some requirements. Now, this doesn't necessarily always recognize mods that you currently have installed via other means, like manually installing them. Um, so here it does tell me it already exists. Would you like to overwrite it? But it doesn't give me the option to update it because I didn't install it via the content package manager thing. Um, yeah, I just want to find one that I don't have that does have requirements. I don't think I've done this. Okay, well, this just needs default. So 
we'll cancel with that. But that is, it also only needs, well, it would give you a full list of everything that it requires. Um, actually, let's go back. I don't know why this one's listed so early along. Oh, and I can't see that anymore. Because some of them have like optional dependencies. And I wanted to see if it would list those as well. Uh, this I already have. All right, but that is the content browser. We have an option to go back to the main menu, of course. Um, I believe on Android, there is a button added to open the directory where the files are stored in the mod or in the game, whatever. Um, but that is not available on dust. Oh no, it's in the credits tab. That's where we find it. Open user data directory. Click that button. Uh, of course you can't see it, but it opens a file browser with your dot mine test folder, um, which is handy because depending on how you installed it, it can be in all different places. And if you're trying to help somebody out, you can just tell them, hey, go to the credits tab and there's a button there. There's also a, a link to the mind test website in case you need that. Another new feature that is notable is the on rights click player callback, which allows for mods to do things such as this. This is the pickpocket mod by Runzi. And uh, if you stand close enough to a player with the mod enabled, of course, you can steal items from their inventory. Uh, and it does that using the on right click player callback. In the past, if you wanted to implement something like this, you would have to use a tool, which the player would need to hold. Whereas now it is just an empty hand, right click, or with an item in hand, as long as that item itself does not have a on right click callback. And you can right click on players and in this case, steal stuff from their inventory, but I'm sure there are lots of other uses that the community will come up with and use it for. Form specs have also seen their fair share of improvements, including probably the, uh, the most notable one here, the ability to have 3D elements in form specs. And I don't really know what these are considered, but scroll box containers, I suppose. So we have a scroll box, as you can see here, and we have content inside of the scroll box. And this isn't just static content. There is content that we can interact with. I don't have the skins database installed, but in a scroll box, I can put armor on and off. The 3D model updates. We have the achievements, these update. We can, uh, if I could craft anything here, there we go. Some slabs you can throw things out. Um, I think that we always had the ability to show, you know, most of this stuff, but putting it inside of a scroll box is uh, is new. There's also support for sound effects when clicking on buttons. I don't believe there are any here, um, but that ability has been added. So you can have a, um, a sound feedback when you click on buttons. Again, I don't think that's happening here at all. Um, let's see what else as far as form specs. Um, you can tint the background of buttons, which I don't really think there's any buttons here that are doing that. Um, and this is kind of related. Um, at least it's in the same section on the change log. Entities now have the ability, well, I shouldn't say entities have the ability, but there's the option to change the crosshair when pointing at an entity. So as you can see, I don't have a selection box, but if I were to click here, I would still be picking up the berries. Here, I would not. There we go. So the crosshair, this is changeable, I believe, in texture packs. Uh, crosshair will change shape when you're pointing at an entity. So you don't necessarily have to have uh, selection boxes around them or do node highlighting, which let's be real, makes it a lot more immersive. Um, and that I think is it as far as the form spec updates that I can really show. There have been others, of course, as always with all of these 
segments. Check the change log for full details. Um, I can only show what I know people have made use of already. There are a lot of other new features and bug fixes that I didn't cover here, mostly because I wasn't aware of any mods that were specifically using the new features, and I just don't have time to write a mod that uses all of them myself, plus I'd have to learn how to use them then, and you know, just time constraints. But you can find a full list of all of the changes and updates on dev.mindtest.net backslash changelog. I'll also have that linked down in the video description for your convenience. That's going to wrap up my release video. So hopefully you enjoyed and maybe learned about some new features you weren't aware of previously. Go ahead, download the updates, and I will see you next time.